business meetings I've ever been in, and worship service, and we can truly feel the Spirit of God here last night. I'm thankful for that. Amen. I'm praying that the Lord will bless again here today and help us. And if we'll come to Him and give Him glory, He'll show up. We'll give Him, give him the attention that He deserves, and He'll be here with us. He wants to hear from us. He's a jealous God. He wants us to give Him our attention. So let's do that. Let's set up all the activities and things that may be going on before and after church. Yeah. And, uh, let's just take a little bit of time out of our busy, busy lives and give him some attention, meditation, and thanking him for what he's done for us. If you will, ask you to bow your heads and uh, we'll ask Brother Chris if he will ask a blessing on the service. Most gracious name of Father, we thank you for the privilege to gather at your house at this time, Father God. I just pray, Lord, that we're all gathered here with one mind, Heavenly Father, one spirit, one heart, Lord, to lift up your name and praise, Lord, because we know, Father God, that when we're united in one, Father God, and according to your will, we know that you'll show up, Lord, and bless us, Father God, and we do what you have told us to do, Father God. We thank you for saving our soul. Thank you for blessing us in this little church. Thank you for blessing us, Lord, just to be part of your people, Heavenly Father. We pray that you bless the brother that this morning, this morning, that you would anoint him with your spirit, that you just give him what he needs to give all of us, Father God, and that we can just here better than when we got here, Father. God, strengthen us, speak to us, and just help us to do your will. Help us to praise you, help us to please you here. We give you thanks for all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
young guy right there.
praise Him all the time. Amen. Because everything we do, He makes us able to do. Yeah. If it's a little bit, if it's a whole lot, whatever. When we, down in, we get down in the valley of sometimes all of us do. He's always up there to pick us up. We get too high, think we're doing too good. He's always there to bring us back down where we ought to be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We can, we're not going to praise Him too much.
to do this morning in the land of the Lord, like the wish of Moses here this morning, and have the Lord's name. So thankful today that we're saved and that our, our name is built down in the land of life. And so, uh, the Bible says that the foundation of God stands assured, having this seal of the Lord will offend by their heads. They said that everyone name of the name of Christ be apart from the nation. And uh, today, as a Christian, uh, I am happy on my way. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, or the remission of sins. The Bible says that today. Uh, here at, at this little church, brother, today is the day of salvation. And if you hear his voice, pardon not your heart. The God we serve this morning, he is a delivering God. Amen. And Brother Tony began to quote this morning the scripture. Brother Tony, long before you took the stand this morning, those scriptures, the very same scriptures, were running through my mind this morning. How that God, brother, he's not only a Saving God, that He is a delivering God. Right. God will go with you, brother, after you get saved. He'll go with you. He said, He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. But, brother Paul, He said, I'll go with you all the way. He's yeah. the end of the world. When the enemy comes in like a flood, brother, then will the Spirit of God, brother, we raise up a standard against Him this morning. I, I thought this morning that God has, uh, has delivered me so many times, brother, out of situations. Trevor, I don't know how many times he's delivered me. There's times that I can tell you about, uh, but I'm telling you right now this morning, there's times, Charlie, that God has washed over me and kept me safe. Yeah. Down in the old coal mine, brother, when I didn't know God was watching over me, he was there, brother. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one place in Scripture says, though I make my bed in hell, God is there. If I can take the wings of a great eagle, brother, if I fly to the uttermost part of heaven, and God is there. Yeah. You know this morning, church, that God, his eyes are in every place today, beholding yeah. the evil and the good. Amen. And I'm glad somebody done told us this morning that his eyes today are over the righteous, and his ears are open under our prayer. But you know what, this morning, the face of God today is against them. I that do evil. Yeah. Listen today, church, if you're here and you're unsaved, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, and that this morning you would present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, uh, which is your reasonable service. <coughs> and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed uh, by the renewing of your mind that you might prove this morning what is that good uh, and acceptable and perfect will of God. Listen, when you get saved, I promise you this morning, and there are benefits in this thing. I don't know what you'll face in life, but I can guarantee you that as a child of God, Jesus told us, he said that in this world, uh, he said you'll have tribulation. He said to be a good cheer, uh, for I have overcome the world. And listen, this morning, I, I'm the place in Scripture that Brother Tony quoted while ago was on my mind. I, about that time, the Bible said that Herod, the king, stretched forth his hand and the best certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And when he saw Brother Tony, that it pleased the Jews, it pleased the people. And the Bible said that he sought to kill Peter also. And having apprehended him, he arrested Peter. Uh, he delivered him, brother, the four watch of the soldiers. And put him down inside the inner prison, Brother Chris, a prison, inside of a prison. And there he lay, brother, between two big soldiers. Uh, but listen, the Bible said Peter was asleep. And I'm telling you this morning, uh, uh, were I in that shape, brother, I don't believe that I could be asleep, Brother Bruce. Uh, uh, but listen, this morning, the Bible said that Peter lay there. Uh, uh, down there between them two soldiers asleep. Uh, and over here at John Mark's mother's house, the Bible said uh, uh, that the church had gathered, brother, praise God, this morning. Uh, and there they were, brother, talking to God uh, on behalf of old brother Peter uh, as he was there. Listen to me this morning. Uh, and the Bible said uh, that they were praying to God on his behalf. Uh, oh, here comes God from around the scene that day. He went inside there and he shook that old prison. And the Bible said the angel of the Lord. My brother was there where Peter was and he spoke. 
Peter had his own accord. And he went out there, brother, and the Bible said he went down to the house of young Mark's mother. Hey, praise God this morning. And he began to knock on the door of that gate there. And she come to the door. A little damsel named Rhoda. And no doubt Peter said, let me in. And Peter, and she began to say, it can't be Peter. He walked up down there in the jail cell. Come on, listen, brother. Thank God this morning. When God delivered again, and he will all day. But take care of you and me. And they come in there, and Peter was there. All the rejoicing, brother, that they had there that day. All the listen. I hear what happened on the other side of that.
when he looks at the gold over on the left side. Hey, he's going to say, depart from me. Ye that work iniquity, for I never knew you. Oh, they'll say, the Lord, he'll say, because I was hungry and you fed me not. I thirsty and you give me no drink. I was sick and in prison and you fed me not. And they'll say, Lord, when did we see you like that? He said, I'm awesome. Have you not done it to the least of me, my brethren? Have you not done it unto me? Well, listen today. The people are headed for the judgment of God. Whether you like it or not, you ain't going to get away from God today. It don't matter who your family is. It don't matter about your social status. It don't matter about your bank account. Listen today. The only thing that matters this morning is are you saved? Have you been born again? Have you been down to the fountain and got yourself a drink of that living water? Are you redeemed? Have you been washed in the precious of blood of the Lamb this morning? And if you can't say, I have, then you're in much trouble here in the house of God this morning. Oh, yeah. You know what? David said one time, he said, there is but a step between me and the grave, between you and death. And you're just a step away today from death. You may say, preacher, I'm young. I feel good. I don't feel like nothing's wrong. But listen, I feel about that. Ain't got a thing to do with it today. But you've got a time. My God has set a mark. Out ahead of you, and you will not pass that. There is a day but for you to leave this planet Earth as a mortal human, and you step into eternity and have a tree gold. Then shall it be if you die in your sins, where Jesus is, you can't go. It matters not this morning how many kind words. Somebody stand before your family and say over you, I'm telling you this morning that if your name is not wrote down in the land book of life, that you die where you are today, where Jesus is, you cannot go. There's but one place for you. Oh, where is that creature? And the Bible said a long time and there was a certain rich man who fared sumptuously every day. He was arrayed in royal apparel. He had the best that money could afford. The only he didn't have no need of nothing. Oh, he had the best food, had the best garment. No doubt he had the best house that there was around there. And here, Brother Bruce was somebody who laid down at the rich man's gate. And this man, I want to show you today the difference of being saved and being lost. What you'd be better off to have this morning. You'd be better off to be like the little poor man, the little beggar named Lazarus. He was laid at the gate of this rich man every single day. And you know what he wanted? Charlie, he didn't want to eat at his table. He didn't want Brother Clifford to go in and sit down at his house. He desired the crumb that fell from the rich man's table. And the Bible said he was afflicted. Remember what Jesus said in this world. You'll have tribulation. Charlie, it may be in the form of cancer. It may be in the form of being lame. It may be in the form of some bad illness. But you may have been in a bad car wreck. But you're going to have tribulation. And yet, a bad boy, he was afflicted from the top of his head. I praise God this morning to the soles of his feet. And the rich man, 
in the hands of Father Abraham for something. Trevor, he said, Father Abraham, he said, well, you sent Lazarus, and that was the beggar man who had died. He said, well, you sent Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this thing. And Father Abraham, oh, had a sad cry for him. He said, son, he said, you remember, you know what you'll have back there in that place. You'll be able to remember of the time when the loving mercy of God called you to repent and you acknowledge him oh, not yes, in yes. your life. And that old beggar boy laying there comforted, a real rich man, wanting a drop of water. And old Abraham said, son, do you remember? Oh, praise God. I believe in my heart and that you turn him away. You'll be able to remember on this Mother's Day 2019 when God said, come and I'll give you rest. Come to me, all you the labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. That's what he wants you to do this morning. He's the God this morning of all comfort. Man. He said, you remember on earth you had the good thing and Lazarus had the evil thing. But now look where you're at. Look at Lazarus. He's comforted. And the old dollar boy Oh, listen. He had another request. Now listen, everybody here, most of us has got family. A lot of our brothers and sisters, if you request to have them, they may not love you back, but you love them. If you're a Christian, you love them anyway. But listen, he said, Father Abraham, he said, I got another request. He said, will you send Lazarus to warn my five brothers? I'm not the gun of this awful place. But Tony, I ain't never been nowhere. All that I would want. At least my family to come visit. He didn't want his family there. He didn't want nobody there with him. And Father Abraham said, Son, when they got Moses and the prophets, I let them hear them. He said, No, Father Abraham, if you send one back from the dead, he said they believe. He said, Son, if they don't hear Moses and the prophets, and they ain't going to believe one. And though he rose from the dead, a request denied. Oh, listen to me today. God loves you today. Oh, with a great love. A preacher, how much? How much does God love me? How much? How far is God willing to go, preacher? To save me. Listen to what the book said. Oh, you may be here today with mommy and daddy. You may be sitting with mama and papa all today. People that you love and admire so well. But listen to what the infallible the word of God has to say. It's a greater love has no man than this. We're not even mommy when he's talking about man. He's talking about mankind. And that means the woman too. And that means your mommy. And that means your daddy. Yeah, listen to me. I'm not going to be a hypocrite today. I lay down my life for my children. But here's where it's at today. By me doing that, I will not redeem them for the sin that they owe God. I tell you who done that. But greater love has no man than this. And that a man would lay down his life for his friend. And Jesus said you were his friend. If you do whatsoever, he commands you today. Amen. But you know what you were doing today? As a lost person, you're going against God. You're transgressing his commandments. And you're Amen. going in the way of Cain. You're going in the way of Brother Obelan. You're going after the era of reward. Now listen, and where will that take you today? It will take you to a place called hell where the worm dies not. And the Lord is never quenched. Oh, but praise God today. If you give 
your life to Jesus. He'll never leave you, but he'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Now listen, I told you you won't go. I a man, a man Paul, and his companion Silas down there in the Philippian jail. These men had been arrested, but before they got to the jail, they got walked in there. You know what? The stripes on their back, the bloody, the beaten. You know Paul, that our good brother talked about, he was stoned one time, and they thought he'd been dead, and they drug him outside the city. Paul said, listen, he said, I'll glory in my infirmity today. He said, I want you to hear what I've been through. Now, people all the time going on about what they got going on in their life. Well, listen, what Paul had going on. He said, without the fighting, with them were feared. He said, I've been five times. He said, received out 40 stripes. The same one. He been beat by 39 stripes. Five different times. He said, I've been a night and a day in the deep. He said, I've been shipwrecked. He said, listen, I've been in perils of false brethren, in perils of my own countrymen. He said, but listen, I count the, of the loss of all things of the dumb that I may win Christ. And that's where this man was. He had Silas with him. I'm glad he had a good companion, ain't you? That Bruce is good, ain't it? But to have somebody to travel with, and that when you come up against something, they can help you along a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, people say, well, I don't need no help. No, I wrong. Well, you need help today. Oh, listen. Uh, we need one another. Uh, we need Jesus first. Uh, but we need one another. Uh, listen. And the Bible says, when Paul and Silas had their stripes laid on them, uh, laying down there, as our brother told you what kind of jail this was, it wasn't a nice hilton that they got me in up here on a barber bill or where it's at. I ain't never been there and don't want to go. But I can tell you right now, I'm sure it's not pleasant even up there. But this place, that looked like the Holiday Inn up there, Trevor, compared to where Paul was in Silas. And there they lay, brother, down in that old jail. And you know what? There again, if I was there, brother Noah, I doubt that I could sing. Hey, I doubt that Charlie didn't give me a phone call. I doubt that they would worry about any need that I had. And here was Paul and Silas. I can just imagine in my mind. Now listen, they were other people in that place too. They were other prisoners. And a lot of them probably like you and me who were lost deserved to be there. But listen, Paul looked over at Silas and they said, let's sing and pray and let's talk to God. You know something? And they did. And when they did that, and the Bible said, and God shook that prison off his foundation. And they got in touch, brother, with the Holy One of Israel. And they got in touch with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Charlie, they got in touch with the I Am. And they got in touch with the Deliverer and the Bread of Life. And they got in touch with that fountain that never runs dry. And that old prison shut off its foundation. And the Bible said, well, they were there, their chains fell off. And Tony, the door swung open. Not only their door, but everybody's door, who was a prisoner, swung open. Their chains fell off. And the Bible said, the old devil went himself up, supposing that the prisoners had been fled out of there. 
and grab the sword and get ready to kill himself. And he hear the voice in the darkness. Do you feel like that sometimes, friend? Laying there in the deep recesses in the darkness of your heart. You feel like it's the end of your life. The bid to cheer. Paul heard a voice in the darkness. Hey, do yourself no harm. We are all here. And that old jailer, he got in the light. And he come in trembling before these two men of God. Imagine that light would have been that number. Oh, and he come in there. And he had a question. And he said, sir, what do I have to do to get saved? No, he didn't tell him. Wait a while. He didn't tell him to get done sinning. He didn't tell him to go and do no great thing. Here's what he said. He said, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thine house. Now listen, the jailer, he apparently got it because he took Paul and Silas home to wash their stripes off and then they got up and they baptized him and those that believed in his house. And that's where it's at today. And the Bible said, they that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that daily seek him this morning. If you this morning in the house of God can be willing today to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset you, are you may be able today to run this race with patience and to set before you looking unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of your faith and for the joy that was set before him and going to the cross and despite the shame and he's sitting today on the right hand front of God to make an intercession for you to make you may encounter trouble and you can say that you will you know this I'll show you the delivering God that we serve. He's going to take care of you and me. I don't know in this life. I don't know how I feel good here this morning. I don't know what I'll face today. And Charlie, if I leave, I don't know what I'll face tomorrow. But listen, I know who will be with me if I go home. I do be He said, let not your heart be, uh, let not your heart be troubled. He said, if you believe in God, he said, believe also in me. He said, for in my Father's house are many mansions. Oh, he said, you look so. He said, I would have told you. He said, but I go to prepare a place for you. He said, if I go to prepare a place, he said, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, and that where I am, and there you may be also. Yeah, amen. This is what Peter said. After Jesus said this, Peter wrote about it, didn't he? Yeah, he said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To walk to an inheritance, Charlie. Incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. Where? Reserved for us in heaven. Hey, listen to her cat today. By the power of God through faith. And the salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. Where will we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God? Who having not seen, we rejoice with joy unspeakable. Oh, glory is seen in the end of our days, even the very salvation of our souls today. Lord, yeah. Praise the Lord. Listen, one writer said to him, Oh, my loved one. Oh, I miss him so bad. I do too. Charlie, I've got him. I miss him. But listen, there's the Bible said, Blessed are them that find the Lord. Yeah. Yea, he said, The Spirit, they do rest from their labors, yeah. and their works do fall back to them. You know what Paul said about it, don't you? 
He said, I'm not happy you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which had no hope, like the lost that are with us this morning. If you die, you better no hope. Uh, this, uh, blessed are them that die in the Lord, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. He said, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even some of them were sleeping in Jesus, and will God bring with him. Another writer said, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout at the trump of God and the voice of the archangel and the dead in Christ, praise God, will rise first, incorruptible, and we that are alive and remain Paul under the coming of the Lord. I will not prevent them which are asleep, but will be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and be called up to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He said, Wherefore, a comfort to one another. Over these words, from the God of all comfort today, He sets it on the circle of the earth. His voice today is like a hammer. It's like a rock that breaks the rock in pieces. It's like a bar that shut up in your bones. That's why today, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The Bible said, for his word is quick and powerful. That means it's alive and it's able. It's quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. A piercing into the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints of the marrow. And it's a discerner yeah, right. of the thought and the intent of the heart. Yeah. And they're not a creature, praise God, that's not man or man to be silent. All things they ill, they all things are naked and open. That's the eyes of people who we ever do. Now, to put it in your court today, what say it is? The word is now the He's right here, ain't he? Yeah. Amen. The word is mighty. Yeah. Well, I feel like we're out of there. The word is mighty. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. That is the word of faith that we preach. Yeah. And that will confess it. Don't have it. Lord Jesus, believe it in thy heart that yeah. God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Thank you, Bible. Listen. Did you hear me? Very simple. Thou shalt be saved. If you want Jesus today, you can be saved here this morning. Yeah, you man. believe in your heart and confess with your lips. Your mouth. You shall be saved. No big rituals you need to go through. When you believe, then you see the Holy Spirit come. Amen. Watch the choir come back up. Amen.
Yeah. 